Hello, my name is Dami and this is Ask Dami, the place where you receive practical answers to life's complex questions. And in this 12th episode, I'm going to show you seven practical ways in which you can begin to point out what your purpose is. Have you ever wondered, why am I here on earth? What is my role, my assignment? What are my duties and responsibilities? What is the mind of God concerning my existence? And is there any meaning at all to my life? These are some of the questions we're going to answer in this episode. You do not want to miss it. Shut out every distraction, side attraction, contradiction. Get your rights and material if you have to, but whatever you do, stay tuned because you're going to love this one. Welcome back to Ask Dami, and it's episode 12, and on to this week's question. Questions, more like it. Faith says, Hi Dami, God bless you for his great work in you. Your words and books have always inspired me, especially your book titled Seize the Moment. Actually, I want to request if I can get the electronic version of your first book, Just Do It, and I also want to confirm when your next training will take place. And I want you to advise me on how to discover my destiny, purpose, and what God made me for. I'm counting on your favorable response. Thanks, Faith or your buddy. Interesting collection of questions. I think there are three cardinal things here. First of all, Faith wants to find out how to get my first book. Uh, secondly, wants to know when the next train is going to take place. And number three, needs some kind of direction and guidance with respect to uh, his or her destiny. I don't know if Faith is a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, but it really doesn't matter. It's the principles we're sharing that counts. So on to the first question. Yes, you can download the electronic version of Just Do It. And it's interesting that I keep getting this request over and over and over again, even though I wrote that book in 2008. So it's 2013 now, five years ago. And it's touched many lives. I received testimonies from it. People are dealing with procrastination, getting ahead with their businesses, their ministries, their career, their vocation, and drawing a life plan for uh, themselves and their loved ones. And you can still get a complimentary electronic version and all you have to do is go to this website which is www.damioluatoyimbo.com forward slash just do it so it's www.damioluatoyimbo.com forward slash j-u-s-t-d-o IT. So just do it. And if you go through it, you will be able to get your free copy and also have access to some other bonuses that we don't provide through any other channel. In the meantime, over the next one or two minutes, just watch this video as it tells you a bit more about what Just Do It is all about. Inspiration may be powerful and ideas may be noble, but one good action is weightier than a thousand noble intentions. Have you ever had an idea, a flash of inspiration, and you felt you were the only person on the planet with access to that idea? I guarantee you, you were wrong. Because every time you have a brilliant idea, there are at least a thousand other people on the face of the earth thinking along the same lines. So what makes the difference? It is the speed of execution. Would you like to know how to turn your ideas into progressive projects? How to transform those brilliant flashes of inspiration into successful ventures? Are you interested in learning how to appreciate competition, redefine the impossible, eliminate excuses, and get in the game of life as a winner and a true champion in your field and industry? This book, Just Do It, shows you how. It is a compendium of practical principles that are guaranteed to shove you from the comfortable couch of complacency to the platform of power and proficiency. Go get yours now because it's available online and in stores. Just do it.
Welcome back. I do hope that you get not just your electronic copy, but also your physical copy. There's just something about holding the book in your hands. Now, on to the next thing. When is the next training session going to be? Our next training is going to take place in the month of November, between November 11th through the 16th of November, we're going to have our third season of Dream Academy. Now, Dream Academy has been a blessing to many, many homes and families and to many individuals. And it's something that God laid on my heart a couple of years ago to provide a unique learning environment where people can have access to information that are not necessarily provided in our typical and traditional academic institutions. So things like financial management, Management, leadership, organizational development, fundraising, team building, uh, communication skills, poison etiquette. Those are some of the things that we teach at Dream Academy. And in this year, we're taking it to a totally different level. In the past sessions and past seasons, we've had it just in one country. But this year, this time around, we're going to have uh, different sessions in two countries. We're going to have sessions in Lagos, Nigeria, and sessions as well in Reading, England. So if you're in England or different parts of the United Kingdom, Manchester, Birmingham, Nottingham, Leicester, Gloucester, Worcester, wherever you are, you want to ensure that you're part of Dream Academy this year. To get more information about Dream Academy, simply go to dreamacademyonline.com and you can have access to some training material and some videos that give you an idea of what Dream Academy is all about. We're out there to help you crystallize your dreams, your intentions, your desires, and to provide functional frameworks that can help you to move from where you are to where you truly want to be. Um, I love to tell people that if I was not the visionary or the founder of Dream Academy, I would attend it every year, every season, and I would encourage people that I know and people that work with me on my team to be a part of it. We've had situations where um, a lady comes in and then by the next day, uh, her husband or two days into the sessions, her husband comes around and says, oh, guess what? I need to be a part of that. I don't know what you've been taught, but I've seen a change in your life in just two days. We've had a situation where somebody came in and by applying the things that we taught within the first 24 hours, was able to go out there and invest in his business and practice the things we taught him and generate twice as much as he paid for the academy. But I don't want to keep blowing uh, my own horn. Um, right after this next commercial break, I'm going to dive into the third set of questions, which is how to pinpoint your purpose. But for now, Watch this. My name is Marene Kea Ajayi. I beautify lives, I create style for them, and I unravel the hidden beauty in them. The greatest thing that's ever happened to me so far is coming to Dream Academy. I've learned how to save, I've learned how to relate with people, I've learned how to be self-confident in whatever I want to do. I have a dream. Go for it. I have a plan for my life right now. I want to say a big thank you to Dream Academy for giving me this opportunity to have a clear vision of what I want to do. And I say that God will continue to give you guys the strength and the grace to keep on and keep affecting lives. Dream Academy, you guys are the bomb. I'm going to live my dream and I've started living my dream. I want to say thank you. Thank you to Dream Academy. Awesome. So I do hope that you're going to be at the next session of Dream Academy in Lagos, Nigeria, teaching you how to fund your dreams, how to raise capital for your business, how to get corporate sponsors to buy into your projects, your programs, and your products. And in Redden, England, on the 16th of November, one day, but multiple sessions, we'll be teaching you how to unlock your genius, how to unlock your academic genius, how to unlock your personal genius, how to crack the genius code, how to unlock your leadership genius, and how to unlock your business genius. Now to the main thrust of today's question. How do I pinpoint my purpose? How do I find my purpose in life? How do I know what I was born to do? Now, let me say this. Your ultimate purpose is to reflect God's glory through your 
peculiarity, your industry and or ministry, which means that regardless of what you eventually become in terms of whether you function in the oil and gas sector or you function in the media and entertainment industry or you work in banking and finance or you're an entrepreneur, a writer, a social worker, a politician, a policeman, a military officer, what God designed you to be was to be a conduit for his glory, a conduit for his character. Because the whole purpose of man was for God to extend the jurisdiction of his authority and his kingdom, his influence in a totally different colony. And when you understand this, you realize that God is not all about starting a new religion. Uh, and those who believe in Jesus Christ, like I believe in Jesus Christ, are not religious people as the world makes it look like but are people who are who understand the kingdom philosophy the kingdom mindset of god the god is a king over the entire galaxy and in the galaxy you have a colony called the earth and what he put man on earth to do was to represent his attributes his character his ideas his ideologies philosophies orientation and to spread the love joy and peace that you have in heaven here on earth. So having said that, how do you discover your purpose? What are the tips that you can apply to discover your purpose? Let me share a few things with you before I share some other things with you. So first of all, understand that your purpose is determined by God, but it's discovered by you. Now, you don't just wake up and say, I believe my purpose is to be a millionaire, <laughs> or I believe my purpose is to be a, a construction engineer, or I believe my purpose is to be a writer. No, it is determined by God. Now, see yourself as a, a, a masterpiece. See yourself as a creation, as something that has been crafted by the most brilliant mind, that is the mind of God. Like an author writes a book and an engineer crafts a machine, God makes a human being for a purpose. God makes every human being for a purpose. Now, the book does not determine its purpose. The author informs the purpose of the book. The machine does not determine its own purpose. The engineer that designs it has an intention in mind. Similarly, you're like a book that contains the instructions of God to your generation, the ideas of God to your generation. You're like a machine that has been crafted by the gifted hands of God. And so God is the one who determines your purpose, but it's your responsibility to discover that purpose that has been determined by the divine intention or the divine mind of God. Now also understand that you can have a revelation of your purpose instantly, or it can be progressive constantly. What that means is sometimes your purpose is revealed to you in a flash. Like some people say, oh, well, one day I was sleeping and I saw white light in my dream, or I saw an angel appear to me in my room, or I was driving and something struck me, or I was thinking and I had this boom, and I knew I was supposed to be a speaker, I was supposed to be a leader, supposed to be a, a pastor, supposed to be a social worker, supposed to be a, a caretaker, and all of that. But not everybody's going to have that unique, outstanding, blow them upside down experience where you have goose pimples all over your body and maybe even your teeth. <laughs> but some of us are going to have to walk through it as a journey of discovery. For some of us, we're going to have moments of doubt, moments of confusion, moments of complication, uncertainty, a myriad of thoughts and options and alternatives. And you have to walk through all of that patiently to be able to discover the entirety of your purpose. So if you're not at that point where you know exactly what you ought to do, don't get concerned, don't get, become bothered and anxious and say, well, maybe I don't have a purpose. Maybe my life is insignificant. Maybe my life is meaningless and hopeless. No, that's not the case. Sometimes it happens in an instant and other times it has to be through the process of discovery. Now also understand the no two lies are exactly the same. There are some people who have that clear sense of direction, orientation. They come from uh, perfect, picture-perfect families where dad and mom were lovey-dovey all the time and the older brother and younger sister were cooperative. But there are some of the people who were born into what society labels dysfunctional situations or confusing environments or you had to suffer uh, from some psychological disease or some emotional trauma. And all of those things have a way of pushing you into a corner of confusion. But you don't have to say, well, because that 
that person has figured it out, then that person has a purpose and I don't. Your life is unique. Your story is unique. Your purpose is unique. Your assignment is unique. Your gifts are unique. Your calling is unique. Your ministry is unique. So embrace your uniqueness and your individuality. And remember that ultimately your purpose is really to reflect the glory of God. The glory of a thing is the full weight the full manifestation, the full import, the full value of that thing. So your purpose, regardless of where you serve and where you ultimately work, is to manifest the full character, the full giftedness, the full mercy, the full love, and the full abilities of God. You are just one of the multiple pull expressions or channels for the glory of God. So now let me give you seven key things that will help you point to your purpose. What are the seven pointers to your purpose, if you will? Number one, the first pointer is a place. Your purpose is location sensitive. Your destiny is location sensitive. When God made the first man, he didn't mold Adam and then throw him in space or throw him in the clouds or throw him out of order. He put him in a garden. He put him in a place. He put him in a geographic environment. He put him in a location. Now, in the journey to discover your purpose, one of the things that will help is to understand that you're in a place for a purpose. So whilst you're trying to figure out the grand purpose and that big picture that many of us think is so celestial and so out of reach, what you really want to do is to ask yourself the question, what can I do where I currently am? So if you're working in a company and you feel like, well, I'm not supposed to be working here, and you don't have a clear sense of direction as to where you think you should be working, what you want to ask yourself is, what do I do now? How do I make the most of where I am? How do I cater to the needs of the people in the place that I am? You are sent to a place. David was David of Jerusalem, uh, the city of David in Bethlehem. Jesus is Jesus of Nazareth. Paul was Paul of Tarsus. You are sent to a place. You have an assignment to a place. Now, your place of influence may change from time to time, but the key thing is to start from where you are. Many times people are anxious and nervous and upset and confused and in dilemma because they, they don't know how to maximize the place where they are in. So the first thing is understand that my purpose is tied to a place. So wherever I am, I want to find out what the needs are, what the ones are, and how I can serve. And what you do is you serve your way out of one place to another place. Paul, when he's writing, talks about being changed from glory to glory. But you don't just move from glory to glory without a change, without an investment, without a deposit, without put in something where you were in the first place. So there is a place. Now, the second point to your destiny is the people. You are sent to a person or a group of persons. You're not just sent to yourself or sent to trees and sent to animals. You might be, but you're also sent to people. You're sent to a group of people. So who are you really looking out for much of the time? Who are you concerned about much of the time? Who are you naturally drawn to? Who are the people that you oftentimes manifest or rather attract into your life without even thinking about it? Who are the people you find yourself gravitating towards? Sometimes they are an indication of your destiny and of your purpose. So if you find yourself always gravitating towards preachers, maybe you're called to preach. Towards bankers, maybe you're called to handle money. Towards musicians, maybe there is an element of music or music management or music investment in you. Maybe to sportsmen, maybe there is some element of um, the, the sports field, sports, sports industry, concerns around the sports arena in you. So find out the people that you're naturally drawn to. Number three pointer is you also want to check out your potential, your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. And this are some of the things that we address in Dream Academy. If you're able to attend any of the sessions, you don't want to miss it because it will help you to home in on your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. And many times when you're gifted and you're talented, you feel like, oh, well, there is nothing special about it because everybody else can do it. But the truth is there is something that you've been blessed with by God that was deposited in you even before you were born, right, that 
somebody somewhere needs it somebody somewhere celebrates that somebody somewhere admires so check out your potential number four you also want to look at the problems around you and the problems that you're drawn to or you're generally affected by you were created to solve a problem you may have heard me say to one of the episodes of ask dummy earlier that ultimately you will be remembered for one or two things or one of two things or one or two things the problems you solve and the problems you create the reason God sent you into this world is that is because before you were born there were certain problems in the world there were certain issues and certain challenges in the world and he packaged a solution and break that solution into your body and boom you were born and they call that solution dami or femi or faith or james or john or mary or sarah or whatever your name is you are a predetermined solution to a problem your prescription to your generation god was speaking to a certain man called jeremiah and he said to him before you were born i knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb i called you as a prophet to the nations as a solutions provider as an indication of the right direction to your generation hmm, nice rhymes <laughs> but very relevant truth as well so check out the problems you're drawn to you're touched by the things that you're concerned about the challenges that you're like oh i need to solve this i need to get get a solution to this that is a pointer to your purpose Number five pointer, you also want to check out what you're passionate about. Your passion. What are you passionate about? Passion unlocks possibilities. All around you, there are possibilities. Like every, almost everywhere you move, there are radio waves. But you can't tap into those radio waves without having a box, without having a device that is able to decode those waves and transmit them in a way that is intelligently audible audible or audibly intelligent as the case may be to those who are hearing and that's what happens with passion the possibilities in every terrain in every territory in every location in every space of human endeavor but it's the person who's passionate about those possibilities that unlocks those possibilities so what are you passionate about are you passionate about food i have a friend and a brother who's passionate about food and over the last two years i've seen him grow and i've seen him uh take giant st strides and speak at different places and cook for notable members of society he's passionate about it and through that he's been directed to the path of his purpose that now is able to mentor other people and inspire them with his stories are you passionate about fashion let me say it this way do you have a passion for fashion yeah and the thing about passion is that passion is always in fashion whenever you find somebody who's passionate people want to walk with a person learn from the person uh hang around the person what are you passionate about number six pointed to your purpose is pain what is that thing that has cost you so much pain so much hurt so much difficulty um so many challenges so many struggles are you passionate or rather, are you passionate about correcting a certain degree of pain? So that's combined passion and pain. What Maybe something you've lost. Maybe something you lacked growing up. Maybe you, you grew up without your father and you have pain whenever you see anybody growing up without his father or her father. You might have a purpose to be a father to the fatherless or to have a an orphanage or to have a training school that helps people discover their true identity their possibilities and their potential you might be called to be an investor in the lives of people so those are six core elements that will help you point out your purpose I'm going to do a full-blown one hour teaching on this and train on this if you're interested in it you want to send an email or leave a comment right under this video so I can take at least 10 minutes to drill it down in this six areas now there is a seventh area that I've not listed here and that's an underlying factor that I believe that you must be consistently curious about and that's the seven pointer to your destiny or your purpose which is prophecy prophecy now prophecy is not some spooky thing where people begin to uh, dribble and drab and fall all over the floor and have goose pimples and they're shivering and, and screaming not necessarily that <laughs> 
Prophecy is a human expression to a divine intention, a human expression to a divine intention, a human expression to divine inspiration. That's what prophecy is. And there are different times in your life where somebody who's been sent by God into your life, and into your destiny in a, in a certain capacity speaks prophetically to your life and tells you, guess what, in the next 10 years, you're going to be the best-selling author from your country. In the next five years, you're going to reach out to 100,000 people and minister the power and the presence of God to them. Or in the next five five weeks, you're going to be promoted on the job. Never despise the place of prophecies. Never, ever, 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 ever despise the place of prophecies. So understand the seven things. There's a place. There you're sent to a people or a group of persons. You have personal potential. There are problems for you to solve. You're passionate about something. And there is something that has brought you so much pain that you were designed to correct. The seventh thing is prophecy. You want to embrace all of the seven and if you're able to walk through this, I can assure you have a greater sense of direction and clarity concerning where you should be and what you ought to do. Now, don't miss Dream Academy because it's going to help you distill some of these elements and to fine-tune them in a way that you can begin to act out and plan your life. I always enjoy our time together, but it's also very good to connect on social media. If you're not following me on Twitter, you need to follow me on Twitter. Every now and again, I share some things that I inspired and you know, people just begin to retweet and they just get blessed and get empowered and get refreshed and get encouraged through the things that I teach. And I want you to be a part of that as well. So I'll be looking out for your Twitter handle uh, as you begin to follow my Twitter handle, Damilala Online on Twitter. On Facebook, you can like my page, post your pictures, ask me questions, send me comments, and you definitely want to stay tuned to Dreamstream TV, our channel on YouTube. We're going to be uploading fresh content over the next couple of days and weeks, and we want you to be a part of it. It's been fantastic sharing the pointers to your purpose on this episode, the 12th episode. But between now and when next we meet, remember that you're the answer to somebody's question, the solution to somebody's problem. Go out there and make a positive difference because the world is waiting for you.